Chapo. Remember Pro Radio with your host, Gen T. Fuck, I don't know what, what the fuck. Yeah, fuck it. Jen is a warlord. I'm fucking coming for you. And what? now I feel poo coming out of my bum. So it's, <laughs> it's, it's a lot right now. Yeah, it's a lot. Uh... What's up, everybody? Welcome to Rambo for Radio. I am your host, Chen T. Twitter and Instagram at Chen Two Five Two Three. Well, hello, motherfuckers. Uh, hey, it's me, your dear friend Chen T, podcasting just for you, and maybe a little bit of me. <laughs> I'm so selfish. <laughs> Oh gosh, I have some some wonderful things to tell you and then I will leave you alone. But uh, before I leave, let me start by saying customers of the week. This week, uh yeah. <laughs> This complete uh, jamoke called my work <laughs> asking for an expert on essential oils. Uh, and of course, your dear host Rambo Brand had to answer the phone. I went, ah, oh, fuck. Here we go. <laughs> Every time the phone rings at work, ah, oh, fuck. Here we go. <laughs> I was like, uh, hello, how can I help you? I need an expert. <laughs> I was like, oh, shit, bitch. You called the wrong place. <laughs> I was like, um, okay, an expert in which department? Because you just said you need an expert, and that doesn't tell me who you're trying to talk to. So let's try this again. So <laughs> she was like, I need an expert. <laughs> I said, okay. Uh, how can I help you? Okay. I need an expert in essential oils. And I was like, well, this is a health food store. This isn't a a fucking biological lab, okay? Nobody made anything here, bitch. We just put the shit on the shelf and you fucking buy it. Okay? You don't like what you bought? Bring it back and buy something else. (laughs) What the fuck are we doing on the phone still? She's like, I need to talk to an expert on essential oils. I was like, all right, now I'm going to help you. Is that you? And I was like, well, there's nobody else working here. Everybody's out with Lacovia or doesn't know what the fuck you're talking about. So I will do my best to help you with what little knowledge I have of essential oils. Bitch. <laughs> Bitch. 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 <laughs> 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 Okay, well, I guess I'll just ask you. So, uh, I bought one of the the essential oils diffusers that you sell there. I was like, "Mm mm-hmm. And she was... (laughs) Stupid bitch. She's like, I went to go clean it, and I didn't want to... You know, I didn't want to have to wash it by hand, so I put it in the dishwasher. (laughs) And I was like... (laughs) You stupid bitch! <laughs> you put an essential oil diffuser in a fucking dishwasher. Are you mental? What the hell's the matter with you, woman? Oh my god! I put it in the dishwasher because I was too lazy to clean it. And now all of my dishes and the dishwasher smell like essential oils. I'm like, no shit, Sherlock! <laughs> I was like, ma'am, you did what? And I had to hear her explain it again just so I could put it on mute and just start laughing. Just fucking dying. She's like, yeah, I didn't want to clean it out by hand. I just thought it would be easier if I put it in the dishwasher. And now my dishwasher smells... And my dishes smell like essential oils. Now I need an expert to help me clean out this scent. 
I was like, oh, my God, bitch. You. <laughs> oh, my God. Where on the fucking package did it tell you to stick this in the dishwasher? They don't. They never fucking tell you to do that. You dumb son of a bitch. You goofy. You fucking Momo. What's the matter with you? I just thought it would be easier if I put it in the dishwasher, but I've ran the dishwasher twice now, and it smells like essential oils. It smells like citronella, and my dishes smell like citronella. I was just like, well, at least the mosquitoes won't bother you. <laughs> oh, shit. I don't know what to do. Tell me how I can get this smell. And I said, ma'am, I'm not a fucking scientist. I don't know how the fuck you get smells out of the dishwasher. Why don't you call fucking Whirlpool or Maytag? I don't know. Fucking call the dishwasher, man. Don't be fucking calling me. Call 1-800-LG. I don't know, bitch. I sell vitamins, player. I don't know what the fuck you're talking about. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> I was just like, ma'am, I don't know what you're talking about. I sell vitamins. I, I honestly don't know what you could do here. She's like, you don't know what I could do? I thought you were an expert. I said, no, I told you I was the only one here. I'm the only one here working, okay? So you can either talk to a wall and keep running your goddamn dishwasher like a jackass, or we can try to fix this situation. We can rectify the situation from its rectalness. No thanks to you, bitch. <laughs> oh, shit. She's like, I don't know what to do. I just thought you might know. And I was like, hmm. Well, let me go to Google since you didn't. <laughs> And it says here, you can put baking soda in the dishwasher. I don't know if I want to do that. And I was like, well, that's up to you, sweets. I, there's nothing smelly with my dishwasher, bitch. Okay? And I'm certainly not dumb enough to put an essential oil diffuser in there. They don't need fucking cleaning like that. All you had to do is rinse that shit out with a fucking hose or in the sink. But no, this bitch put her whole goddamn dishes in there and... Put that fucking diffuser in there. And now all that shit smells like citronella oils. <laughs> I'm just calling to see if somebody can help me. I need an expert. Yeah, you need a brain, sweets. You need a fucking brain. Um, damn. I was like, well, you can try baking soda and you can try and scrub your dishes with baking soda. Uh, well, I can still smell. And I was like, well, did you try the baking soda? Well, no, I just don't know if that's going to work. And I was like, well, do you have any better ideas, bitch? <laughs> bitch. Bitch. <laughs> well, I, I guess I could try that and see what happens. I was like, yep, good luck. Goodbye. <laughs> Click. <laughs> I was like, oh my God, I don't claim to be the smartest person on earth, but nowhere on any essential oil diffuser does it say for you to fucking put it in the dishwasher. There's a reason you don't. There's a reason. There's a reason. <laughs> I just imagine her whole fucking house and all of her dishes smell like citronella oil right now. <laughs> all these fucking mosquitoes are flying around her house and the fucking door opens and they don't go in because they're like, holy shit, citronella. <laughs> <laughs> this bitch put it on her plate Hey yo look at this bitch over here She put it on her plate <laughs> Oh shit <laughs> Oh my god Some current events Some current events Of course after last week's episode dropped uh, One of our beloved brothers in Christ um, From the Migos band uh, brother Takeoff was iced in Houston at a dice game. And when we say iced from the hood, that means homeboy got shot and killed. Uh, 
Apparently, he was at a bowling alley until 2 a.m. in the morning and proceeded to play dice with his fellow brethren in Christ. And someone pulled out a gun and started shooting. And Brother Takeoff was hit with a stray bullet and was killed instantly. Now, (laughs) first of all... (laughs) This is so fucked up. I was like... When I was reading the news, uh, because I just happened to be up early because I was working an early shift last Tuesday, I was like, and he said, amigos died. I said, well, which friends died? I'm sorry, what? <laughs> amigos? Uh, the three amigos? Like, from the movie? <laughs> and then I went and did some further digging, and then it said, uh, amigos rapper. And I went, hmm. Hmm. Well, uh, it's not Cardi B, man, because she would be up all over the internet crying about her man. So I was like, are there anybody else? And then I was like, oh, yeah, that guy, that guy Nacho. There's a Nacho in Amigo, right? (laughs) And then it turned out a Nacho is a Quavo. (laughs) Sounds like a piece of cheese. (laughs) Some kind of vegan cheese Quavo. Some some vegan nut cheese Quavo. (laughs) And I checked to see, I'm like, oh shit, well he's over here crying, so who the fuck else is left in Amigos? <laughs> I, <laughs> I didn't know who the fuck this guy was. <laughs> I was like, yo, he must be the fucking hype man that doesn't say anything. He's just dancing in the corner like one of those fucking air dolls they got at the gas station. <laughs> I was like, oh, damn. Oh, shit. <laughs> y'all hype man is gone. <laughs> Crazy stuff. Y'all got uh, my brother Panda, 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 Panda. He's all scared now. Fucking designer was on the gram like crying like, I'm not going to rap anymore. You guys are going to kill me. Like, what? Bro, we don't remember who you are. We've, we've already forgotten who you are, bitch. Like two. What is that? Four or five years ago, you had the panda, 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 panda song. <laughs> Nobody knows who the fuck you are anymore, Jack. <laughs> I thought when fucking little Nas X came on the scene, I thought that was designer. <laughs> I said, oh, shit, my man designer shrunk. He got a sequel to the panda, 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 panda. Gonna take my home to the whole town road. I'm gonna round it up there no more. I was like, oh shit, that's not designer. Some other guy. <laughs> Some other black gay guy. Yeah. <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> oh my God. But on, on beloved brother in Christ. Uh, Brother Takeoff has taken off into the spirit world as he was iced last Tuesday. Um, uh, Some interesting notes about Amigos. Apparently, this was a uncle and and, and nephew group. I guess Brother Quavo is the uncle and and, uh, Takeoff and Offset were the nephews of Mr. Nut Cheese, Quavo. Um, I just I'm completely fascinated by this stuff. <laughs> I was like, God, dog. If anything else, like, whoa, there we go. That's one shitty. That's one less shitty rapper rapper right now. <laughs> My condolences to the Amigos family. You know, I, I love the hit song, Running Drops, Drop Drop in a smoke in a kitchen, a crock pot, something on your bitch here, yeah, thought thought thought. <laughs> Or the hit a little lip, hit a little right. I'm gonna knock that pussy out like fight night. But if it's ever to be left, but if it's ever to the right, beat a little lip, beat a little right. I'm gonna make the booty out like fight night. Bro, be a bad lip. <laughs> Holy shit, terrible ass music. You know, Mother Nature was like, you know what? We had enough of your bullshit. You gone, Jack. <laughs> Mother Nature pulled the plug on that shit rap, which is ironic because I guess Amigos was about to break up or some shit. I don't know. But uh, that was the word on the street. And then clip clap, my man is gone. 
R.I.P. Takeoff. Uh, and speaking of uh, death, death has been very busy since we have last spoke to each other. And they took our beloved brother in Christ, Aaron Carter. Oh, my God. Man, just last week, oh boy, got a DUI. <laughs> he was driving around Lancaster, swerving in his RV. <laughs> Holy shit. Uh, I guess old boy was like, hey, uh, uh, it's been cool world. Peace out. And uh, pulled the old Whitney Houston in the bathtub. And uh, that's how he beat Shaq. <laughs> I'm going to hell for that joke. <laughs> and that's how I beat Shaq. God damn it. Um, oh boy, Aaron. I mean, just a a great start. Nine years old. Had his first hit record. Nine years old. Not too many nine-year-olds got a her hit record going on. You know what I'm saying? Brother of Nick Carter from the Backstreet Boys. Uh, brother Aaron was always trying to get out of Nick's shadow, unfortunately. And uh, you know, he had a few hit songs, you know, that's why I beat Shaq. And, you know, there's a couple other songs, but for the most part, uh, he just partied hard. He was the partying brother of Nick, and um, he had a twin sister, Leslie. I guess she had passed away, overdose, drug overdose. Uh, oh boy, Nick Carter used to date, got got caught up, was dating Hillary Duff and Lindsay Lohan at the same time. Bitch. 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 <laughs> How the fuck could you possibly think that that was ever going to work out, sir? <laughs> All three of y'all are in the public eye. Everybody going to know when you leave Hillary Duff house and drive on over to Lindsay Lohan house. Y'all, <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> you stupid. You fucking goofy. Oh, shit. So, yeah, he is famous for uh, dating uh Cheating on Hillary Duff with Lindsay Lohan and being engaged to Carrie Ann Beniche, another hearty with a body, a playboy playmate. Um, and then he met some, some scruffy ass bitch and had to start OnlyFans. <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> oh, man. Crazy life. Felt bad for my G. He just couldn't really get it together. Uh, he was going to be trading with uh he was supposed to train with at beautiful violence for his celebrity boxing match against lamar odom and was just half-assing it wouldn't show up at all to some of his uh training sessions so my man's was like you know what uh i gotta cut you off you, you no, this ain't good and then he proceeded to disrespect him on the internet i'm like no no no, wait a minute player whoa 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 <clears throat> My man at Beautiful Violence, uh, good dude, solid homie, has helped me out with some striking stuff, has helped me with some diet-ish. I think he's really the only one that really got me dialed in to figure out my diet where I lost 50 pounds, thanks to my man right there. Uh, he knows what the fuck he's talking about. So the fact that Carter was disrespecting him publicly on the gram... You know, you can affect my man's business. He's got a gym down in Santa Monica called Fighter, and he does a good job. He trains a lot of professional athletes. How dare you, Brother Aaron Carter, disrespect my man's boxing prowess, all because he didn't want to show up to practice or he was being lazy, he didn't want to do exercises. Like, bro, that's on you. That's not on your coach. That's on you, man. You don't get to then publicly bash your coach because you didn't want to do some fucking jumping jacks you showing up an hour late to a training session and then you're gonna leave early get the fuck out of here man so after that disrespect i was done with that because you're not gonna disrespect the homie like that so uh and of course he did have that celebrity boxing match with lamar odom and he lost which was karma in itself uh, I know that uh, Jason Ellis had tried to get him sober for a little bit, but it just didn't work out. And, you know, drugs and alcohol. What a fucking bitch. What a a grind I wish upon no one. Uh, if you just can 
had to get it together. It's like, think about what kind of poison that is, man. Thinking about being just high on pills, doped up on pills, or just boozing it all day long, all night long. Brother Aaron Carter was just like not here. He was not present. And he was a father. That's the worst part. He just had a baby. You're all fucking doped up all the time. You're boozing it all the time. How can you expect to be a good dad? He just had so much shit going on. We all got shit going on. But it's up to you to take the step and do something about it. Fix it. Being doped up, drunk 24-7, it ain't fun, man. People got to deal with that shit even if you're not around nobody. A lot of times, Brother Aaron around him, what what kind of people was Aaron around? His his girlfriend that he was abusive to or she was even abusive back to him? Like, just fucking toxic. It's just toxic. Just you're, you're taking in toxic materials and you're spewing out toxic shit. And it's just an endless cycle. And we all knew where it was going to go. We all knew this man, if he couldn't turn it around, if he couldn't stop boozing, if he couldn't stop pilling it up, that this was going to be a, a road to, to destruction. Just listening to him, I remember that episode on Ellis where he's just so manic and not making sense. And Ellis is really trying to help him and he's just not making any kind of sense. He just had a shitload of excuses and none of them worked. It's like, dog, how about instead of excuses, why don't you just actually just try and fucking do something with yourself for a fucking hot second? Okay, player, how about you just try? Um... And I say that to anybody who's just like, you're locked into this shit. You can't find a way out. You're just spinning your wheels. You got to try. I posted this on the gram. um, And I think it's really cool. If you got Instagram, go to my Instagram page if you haven't already seen it. I posted a chart with my trading on there. And it showed, uh, I think I started in January... With my second account. My first account, I've been trading since since COVID. But I started a whole new account where I was doing penny stocks. And I think I started in January, February of this year. And my first couple months, killed it. Got to March and got so low. By the end of March, I said, I'm going to give up. I'm going to quit. I can't take this anymore. I suck. And... What I noticed on that chart and what maybe you might notice on that chart is right when I hit that wall of suckiness, there was a point in that graph where I started to try even harder. I said, nah, you can't quit now. You're on, you're on to something. Keep going. And nine times out of 10, the moment you want to quit, the moment you want to give up on something, that's when shit's about to get good. And you can see on my chart. That my numbers fucking skyrocket after that. Skyrocket. I went from doing okay to shit to fucking to the fucking moon. Now, obviously, I'm not perfect. I know that chart's going to come down. I can't stay up forever because you don't learn anything. It's, it's the moments where you come down into the rebound stage that you learn something. You learn something about yourself. How far, how low can you go and come back and make a comeback? America loves a fucking comeback, goddammit. This is America, Jack. And I'm telling you, if you are as low as you think you can possibly go, seek therapy, seek a life coach, seek a legitimate outward source that maybe is not your friend because sometimes we get advice from our friends and they're maybe too scared to tell you something and you're not going to want to hear. Seek out some sort of advice, Google, I don't know, but figure a way out. But you have to try. And I feel like my boy Aaron just did not try. Look at my man's life. Nine years old, he's been having it good. He's been partying. He's been drinking. He's been pilling it up. He's been making money. He's been banging all these girls. He's lived a life that that most people would dream of. And he still was unhappy. Still was unhappy. Unhappy enough that at 34 years old, he's dead. 
He's fucking gone. I can't imagine a life where I couldn't try. Okay? Booze, pills, money, girls, whatever. Sure, some of that's nice. But I know a lot of those things hinder my ability to try. So I don't fuck with them. I don't fuck with pills. I don't fuck with alcohol. Every once in a while I might have a drink. But I don't like that. That shit slows me down the next day. And I got shit to do. I got plans. I got dreams. And I can't exactly pursue them when I'm all in the bed. (laughs) You know, it's just like, fuck. It's. It's poison. It's fucking poison. And I say that to anybody that's listening, that it can maybe spread the word to somebody. Just fucking try. Just try. You got a dream. You got a goal. You want to do something. You got to try. But you also got to think about what things are in the way that are keeping you from trying. And if it's booze, if it's pills, if it's money, if it's girls... If it's men, because all my all my all my gay boys out there, <laughs> I gotta talk to y'all a little bit more. Y'all be a little too much with the men's. <laughs> but if you're addicted to men or something, any of these kind of addictions, you're you're substituting for something you're lacking. And it's not to say that lack is bad, but you need to find out why you lack that or why you would want this. You need to get to the bottom of this shit. Start thinking about how you tick and what's it going to take to make you better. Every day I wake up and I go, how can I be better than I was yesterday? Yesterday, I fucked up. I said some shitty things about somebody that I cared about. I shouldn't have done that. Or yesterday, I fucked up. I ate a fucking tub of ice cream. Fuck, don't do that. Yesterday, I fucked up. I ate a whole pizza. Ah, oh, shit. You fucked up. Gotta go to the gym twice. Okay, something to counterbalance that, those moments where you're like, ah, shit, I slipped up. Ah, shit, I fucked up. That's okay. You get back up and you try and you go, you go further. You go further than you could before the day, the day you were. You go further than you ever think you could go and then push further than that. Because how else will you make progress? How else will you achieve anything? How else will you try? Spinning your wheels like my boy Aaron Carter. We know where that ends up. Dead in a bathtub. And you don't want to be fucking dead in a bathtub, bitch. You want to be up, kicking ass, being a better you each day. And if you're a better you, that is contagious. That. Other people see that and that makes them want to be better. And then we got a better community. I know I'm on this huge rant right now about being better, but we got elections coming up. And the reason shit is bad, because people are not being better, okay? (laughs) People are getting fucking worse. And I need y'all to start being better. Stop with the bullshit. Your feelings are not facts. And let's just be fucking better, okay? Oh, God, speaking of being terrible... And not being a better human being. (laughs) Oh, my God. (laughs) Oh, shit. Man in Italy celebrating the birth of his child. So you can imagine the birth of a child. Your son or daughter has come into the world. And you're excited of all the possibilities they will become. And what the many things they can do. They might cure cancer. Or be a chess grandmaster with anal beads in their butt. Who knows? <laughs> An all-star athlete or a top earner on OnlyFans. <laughs> you're excited about the birth of your child. And your neighbor has had enough of you making noise. And what does this neighbor do? <laughs> Shit, this is so fucked up. This neighbor gets out his bow and arrow and shoots and kills the man celebrating the birth of his child. (laughs) Oh, my God. According to the neighbor, he just shot the arrow to scare 
the man from making so much noise, I guess he is a noisy neighbor and the neighbor had just had enough and got his bow and arrow to scare him. But apparently he hit a bullseye <laughs> and he killed his neighbor. <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> oh my God. Oh, shit. What about this poor child? He don't have a dad no more. Fuck. That's crazy. That's some Kill Bill shit. Like, when that child gets up, grows old, you know he's got to kill that guy, right? <laughs> you better fucking... <laughs> You're going to have to kill Bill, that neighbor, man. Holy shit. <laughs> Holy shit. I don't even know how you could scare somebody with a bow and arrow. I'm pretty sure you're not supposed to point that shit at people unless you're going to fucking use it. And B, you know, your hand slips. What the fuck? You killed somebody, man. He going to jail. The end. Mm, another douche. Another not so good human being. Uh, according to the FBI, the FBI has broken up a shoe Ponzi scheme. Michael Hazatera. Michael is arrested, he and his wife were arrested for profiting $300 million off of defrauding customers um, on limited edition shoes, such as Air Jordans, Nike Air Force Ones, etc. Michael began in 2013 purchasing limited edition shoes to resell online. Mike would then take pre-orders on shoes he knew he could not get. He would get 600,000 orders for a pair of Air Jordans, and the most he could get was 6,000 pairs, okay? 10% of that, okay? So my man knew he could not get all these shoes. So what did he do? He just took the money anyway and just kept taking people's money and kept doing the shit. And just now, 10 years later, finally got caught. Nine years later, finally got caught. I mean, you have to be, you know, as a sneakerhead, I love collecting shoes. But one of the things I learned early on about the sneaker game is I stay away from the Nikes because... There's some trifling ass people, more people like Nikes. I get it. There's more eyes on it, but there's also more scammers on there than ever before. I stick to the skate shoe game. You know, the skate shoe game, we got one or two scammers. Everybody knows who they are and they just don't buy from them. (laughs) You know, Um, or if it's outrageously priced, nobody fucks with you. The end. Whereas the Nike is like, hey. Let me take your money and not send you the shoes. The the head of Nike North America, her own son, was taking the shoes and then selling them to people. Now, he never claimed to not fulfill the orders. He always gave people their shoes, but he basically got the shoes for free, all of them, and then was flipping them at ridiculous, ob- obscene prices to people. It was just absurd. So people like Mike... Zeda of Zeda Shoes and other rich kids who just buy up the lot, the buy up the lot of the shoes and then turn around and flip them for eighteen hundred a pair, twenty five hundred a pair. Y'all are on some fuck shit. How do you expect people's parents? Kids want these shoes, so you're telling me you're expecting both parents to be working two different jobs to be getting these kids these shoes? Fuck that. That ain't right. That ain't fair. So I got out of the Nike game early. I'm like, wait a minute. Mm, No. When you got a pair of Jordans for $100, I'll call you. Otherwise, don't call me. (laughs) I don't want to be paying no $350, no $450, $900. I seen another pair of shoes the other day that were a prototype of probably one of my favorite skate shoes ever. It's a prototype. So they they did the same mold, but at the time the company was no longer in contract with this particular person they designed the shoe for. So they kind of made a copy of it and sold it until they got a cease and desist, right? They're not limited. They just don't make them anymore. 
There's hundreds of these shoes out in the world. Hundreds of thousands, okay? Somebody is charging $1,000 on eBay for these fucking pairs of shoes. I wanted to reach through my phone and choke the guy on the other side. Because I know, I fucking know that those shoes cost $80. You want to make a profit? $250 is egregious, but okay, I'll pay that. You want $1,000? And they're not even the real ones? Get the fuck out of here. Oh, and then I found somebody selling the real ones? $2,500. Okay? And that was a knockdown price. He had it originally for $5,000. I'm like, okay, you know what? These aren't Nikes, okay, guys? Skate shoe community is a small group of people that appreciate the game. Don't fuck this shit up. Don't fuck this shit up for the people that love this shit, okay? You're trying to take advantage, and I don't like it. So I refuse to buy shoes. Anything over 250 go fuck yourself, okay? That's just absurd. Those shoes are 20 years old. I know they don't make them anymore, but they also ain't fucking rare. Everybody got a pair. Somebody got one sitting in their closet, okay? So stop it. Stop it. Sometime in the future, I hope to be tuning into a new show on British television coming soon to your TV. It is called My Massive Cock. <laughs> That's right. This is a documentary about men who have 10 inch, 10 inch plus dongs and are miserable. They are sad. <laughs> they say, oh, woe is me. Our balance are too big. We are fetishized and abused over our penis sizes. Women. Oh, well endowed, being well endowed gets you attention, but not affection. We are men with huge dongs, and we just want to be loved by ladies. I'm like, oh, what the f- Hey! Hey! Bitch! 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 You should be happy you have a harm, okay? Some of us out here have been cursed with a fucking China, a fucking Yanni, and some tits that we never fucking asked for, Okay? For some women, most women, their fucking yonis bleed every three weeks. Sometimes for weeks at a time on end, no break. You mean to tell me that you're crying on a fucking TV show about your 10 inch dong? <laughs> Chalk off, you fucking prick. You shall be grateful, okay? Okay? You don't see me. Where is my British TV show for? Hello, I have a micro penis. <laughs> oh man, I have a micro penis. Ladies don't want it. Hey, come on, man. You should be grateful that you were blessed with the birthright. You have a hum. Okay, be proud. God damn it. If you want to fucking break a window that with that thing, you'll break a fucking window with that thing. God damn it. If some lady's like, ooh, I'm attracted to you because you have a big dong, but I don't love you. Who cares, man? Just bang the shit out of her. Just break her gina, okay? <laughs> I don't give a shit. <laughs> you break that thing, sir. That is your God-given right, okay? <laughs> So anyway, I hope uh, m- m- some of my British fam who are listening, I hope that you tune into my massive cork. Coming on, I think it's on Channel 4, Channel 5 in the BBC. I will probably watching, be watching it illegally, of course, on my fire stick. Okay, my, my four-inch fire stick. <laughs> All right, I shall give you my UFC picks. Oh, my goodness gracious. Finally, the the UFC pay-per-view America has been waiting for. Israel, the last title bender, Atasanya versus Alex Pereira in a rematch for the ages. Okay, my first pick is Carlos Hilberg, Julio Arce, Michael Trinaldo. Oh, boy. Silviana Gomez Juarez. Ataman Atazar, Andrei Petrovsky. Such a strong, violent last name. Petrovsky. Like, you're ready to just fucking commit murder. No shit, my girl's on here. Meatball Molly, that's right. Fucking right. She's a fucking scouser from Liverpool. My name's Meatball Molly. 
You don't give a fuck about motherfuckers else. You don't give a fuck about motherfuckers else. You broke. <laughs> Fucking meatball Molly. Oh my god. Uh, Ryan Span versus uh, who's the guy? Oh fuck off. I'm taking Ryan Span. Ryan Span. Renato Canero. Tan Huka. Chris Gutierrez. Dustin Poye. Willie Zhang. Uh, Nihoma. Ne Willie Zhang. Uh, Le Mai Bongao. <laughs> and then, of course, with my controversial pick, I'm taking Alex Pereira for the win. Those are my motherfucking UFC picks. Bet with me. Met against me. Who cares? Let's watch some fucking fights. Uh, UFC 281 this week in live pay-per-view. Hey, do me a favor. Unless it's about fights, don't bother me on Saturday, goddammit. I'm watching the fight of the century. You're welcome. Woo! I watched The Race of the Century this week on Netflix. And it's about America's Cup. And America's Cup is like the sale sailing they race the sailboats out there in uh fucking rhode island newport rhode island and you know i've never been a fan of boats and my uncle always told me listen if it flies floats or fucks rent it uh he bought a boat uh when he sold his jewelry business and that thing was a piece of shit Always leaking, always somebody got to go down and scrub the goddamn thing. This, that, and the other. He said, never buy a boat. (laughs) So I've just never been a fan of boats, thanks to my uncle. But after watching this race, I got to get me a goddamn sailboat. (laughs) Holy shit. Race of the century. America's Cup, I guess, was a trophy that America had literally not lost in over a 100 years. And the Australians came to bring it, mate. These fucking cunts came to take our trophy. And they smashed us to bits. But the whole thing is, is you got to get into this show because, well, it's a documentary. It's like 45 minutes, okay? Or like an hour and change. It's so fascinating because you get to see the behind the scenes, the passion, what it takes to sail these sailboats. And after watching this, I said, man, I have a newfound appreciation and respect for people who sail these race boats. You will not be disappointed, goddammit. It's really fascinating to see the passione of people who participate in the America's Cup. Um, I'm currently watching... Uh, six part series called The Losers on Netflix It is amazing Losers, not uh, The Losers, not the movie uh, But it is a story of various people who, uh, who are good at what they do But somehow could never win Or were always called a loser in their life And they, yet they persevered into They took people criticizing them and they took that and they and they built something with that criticism they made themselves become awesome they became championes they persevered in the face of death um prime example uh i don't want to spoil it for you but i'll just tell you about uh one of the ones that i forgot about but i remember her as a kid was uh surya bonnelly and she was a french black ice skater and female ice skater and Because, unfortunately, she had a style that was unique to ice skating at the time. Um, It wasn't formal. And then, of course, I hate to say it, but it was true. Um, Figure skating relied heavily on picking white people to win. They don't want a black person to win. And it just so happened that this young French girl was amazing and They never let her win. She won Worlds. She won all these other competitions, but they would never let her win. They would never let her win Olympic gold. The closest she came in the Olympics, I think, was either third or fourth. Um, And then in another prestigious ice skating championship, the best she could do was second. Um, And it was just her routine. She combined... Um, gymnastics with figure skating, which during the 80s, nobody was doing that yet. Nobody was combining those two elements. And she was out skating everyone, and yet she was losing, kept losing, kept losing. 
and I always thought, man, this, this black girl, she has true grit. She would never quit. She would still go out there every time and compete and compete and would sh- refuse to change her routine so much so that she even lost her coach on the spot at the Olympics because she refused to change her routine because she really believed in being uniquely different than everyone else. And at the time in the eighties, that was not acceptable. Now these are all moves that everyone is doing now. Old girl, Serena, Saria did this. So I was like, man, this girl, she broke the foundation. She paved the way for other people, other figure skaters to be more expressive. Um, and you know, I just thought, man, how shitty does the ice judges feel for robbing this this poor girl out of how many gold medals? How many times did they tell her no? No, you're not good enough. It's not good enough. Even though all of her routines would score higher, they were just more difficult. And yet, no, 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 no. But she learned to persevere. And she now teaches uh, other young African-American ladies. She teaches young black girls ice skating in Brooklyn, I believe it is. Um, But there's just so many stories on here. There's one about a terrible English soccer team. Um, It's a really good story, even though they're a terrible soccer team. Uh, And then, of course, uh, I'm currently, I'm obsessed with, and I'm going to watch it again because it's so good. It's such a good episode. Um, I'm watching the story of a, an Italian man who's doing the marathon disables. And if you know, if you're balls deep in the ultra marathon world, like I am, you know, there's the Moab 250. Um, and then there's the disables and the disables is a race that happens in the Sahara desert for six days, six days. You got to bring your own water. Okay, there's people around that will eventually give you water, but for the most part, you're on your own. You got to be self-sustaining. You got to bring your own tent. You got to bring your own water in a backpack. And you're out in the fucking desert, in the Sahara Desert, in the sand dunes, running, running for, it's 250 kilometers, which is like, got to be like 150, 160 miles in the fucking scorching sun, in the cold night, six days of hell. Oh, my God. And I'm at the part where I'm going to call him Mario, which is hella racist because I don't remember his name. <laughs> I deserve to know his name. He deserves for me to know his name because this guy, I just caught the tip of his story. It's just the tip of the iceberg. And my man's got lost. He got lost in the Sahara Desert. He somehow got lost in the race. And <laughs> that's it this is all i'm gonna say i don't want to spoil the rest because it gets worse um, but oh boy mario has been lost in the desert and he decides to drink his own pitch <laughs> i was like no because he's talking about it and you can tell he's working it up his way to just emotionally express that he did indeed drink his own piss to survive in the sahara desert and as he's starting to tell the story, I'm like, no, 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 Mario, no, don't you do that. <laughs> Mario, you drink your own piss, so why? <laughs> I was fucking crying. <laughs> oh, and then it just got worse from there. Oh, God. Brother Mario deserves a medal, okay? But, uh, you know, instead of a medal, all you guys are going to go and watch... Uh, losers on Netflix so you can support brother Mario and show that uh, you uh, you uh, <laughs> you're watching you are in full support of him drinking his pish and many of the terrible stories he would tell you after he drank his pish um, but yeah really cool really fascinated determined they had thought this guy was a loser he was a goner he was dead, and Brother Mario was in the desert for six days by himself, drinking his pish. So uh, just goes to show you, if you've got heart, you've got determination, you try one foot in front of the other, that you can get this shit done. You can get it done, goddammit. Trust me, you can get this shit done. 
Um, speaking of done, that's going to do it for me, folks. I hope that I am done badgering your eardrums. I'm sure you've got plenty of blood spewing out of your ears at the moment. Please like, share, and subscribe to Ramble Up Radio. Uh, tell a friend, but only if they're cool, of course. Uh, I hope that you have enjoyed the show this week. But until next time, this is Ramble Up Radio. I'm out. Peace. You have mental problems. You have some. You need attention. You need something.